Good morning and welcome back. I'm Natalie and today I'm going to be doing a bit of a different stream. So it's all about my favourite things this week over on Pretty Gets Gritty. So each member of the DT has been challenged to pick their favourite product and we're going to be working with that, whether that's in a live or in a video or in a step by step. So first of all, hi Diane, hi Carol. And if it seems like it's a bit slow for me to do comments, hi Nikki, then it's because I can't find my glasses. They've vanished into the ether and I'm having a bad eyesight day, so it couldn't be a worse day to lose them. Uh, good morning, Linda, and good morning, Deb. So today marks the start of craft month. So there's going to be lots of fun things happening on Pretty Gets Pretty, and there's also going to be some fun things happening over on Planet Craft too. So it's going to be a nice busy month. So do join in. There's going to be some challenges, um, some their challenges as well, which are going to be very fun. So I hope you'll all join in and start posting your artwork. We'd love to see what you make. And let's introduce you to my favourite thing. So the one I've chosen it is the Pretty Acoustic Stencil. Um, I like it because it's really versatile. There's lots of things that you can do with it. You can use it to create a background, you can use it to become more of a feature of your piece, but it's also good for if you just need something and you're not sure what, if you just want to pop just a little bit of shading behind something, we can use it for that as well to give yourself a basis for your focal area of your card, your scrapbook page, or your actual mixed media. And good morning, Jill. And, yep, happy first day of spring, too. How do we know that you would pick that particular stencil? I know. When I said to Ian that we had to pick favourite thing, and we all knew what we were going to go for. <laughs> and morning, Mum. So, stencil care, first of all. Don't do what I've done. Make sure you clean it before you, you finish for the day. So, if you are working on a batch of samples for instance then do try to have either a baby wipe or a, a shallow tray of water that you can just stick it in so that your mediums aren't drying onto your stencil do as i do not do as i say in this case um you also want to avoid using anything too sharp on it so if you do ha end up having to give it a bit of a scrape because it has dried on just go really careful with what you're using so that you aren't damaging the image so, there's a few different ways that we can actually use this stencil. We can use it with our texture paste and our gel mediums and things like that. And you'll get a lovely raised surface. And depending on which one you use, you'll either get a raised matte surface or you will get a gorgeous jewel-like surface. Because as you'll find that when you actually apply with your um, palette knife over the top, you're going to get a nice smooth top to each of these little circles. And then when they dry, they look like little jewels on your card. The other thing that we can do is we can actually ink for it. So I'm going to be doing a bit of inking today, just because that's one of the things I'm still allowed to do. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, I'm, I'm banned on doing a few techniques at the moment because of my hands until they recover. So let's first of all get the right mat. So I'm going to be working with a magnetic station so these I find help so that you're not having to apply lots and lots of tape and first thing to consider is which way up you want to go so I tend to find myself automatically going and doing this so I thought let's change it round so I'm going to go vertical and I'm going to go across this way and I'm not going to use the whole thing. So one of the things that is the joy of the stencil is you've kind of got to tear the two halves. So rather than look at it as a whole, which you can do, if you put an imaginary line down here, and you've kind of got a little short variation where you want to do a gradient, and you've got a longer one. So I'm going to start off with the shorter one. And I'm going to use the grid on my mat just line everything up because there's nothing worse than doing your stenciling and finding that your stencil's kind of 
on the lunk. It's not too bad if you do it purposely and you've got it up to like the 45 degrees but if it looks like it's supposed to be level and it's not it's just not good. So if that is something that you struggle with and it could be that you want to go on the 45 degree just while you're getting practice. And one of the other things I'm looking at when I'm positioning this is this top edge and the bottom edge. So I'm trying to make it so that this bit is central. And we can use our magnets to grip it in place. So I'm going to use the magnets first of all on my stencil. And then we can go onto the card. Now you've got a good runoff area here, so you shouldn't need to do any masking tape on this edge. And we'll go from there. So I'm going to start off with some villainous potion. So I'm going to start dark and I'm going to work my way up. And I'm just going to use some little mini blending brushes. So these are available online. And we can use these to target little areas of our stencil. So if you're going to go all over, you can use one of the bigger makeup brushes. But for something like this, where we just want to do a little section, I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm just going to do the bottom three lines. Now when you're using a brush rather than a sponge, you're going to find you get much more detail in your stencil because it can go right up to the edges. When using a sponge there's going to be a little bit of a halo around the cut edge, which is one thing to bear in mind, but you'll also get a much stronger colour. So that is something you can play with. If you want to do, um, for instance, a light colour with the brush, you can always go back in with a dark colour with a sponge, you'll get kind of like a little offset. And then once I've done those three lines, I'm just going to blend that up. So just using what's on the brush doesn't take very much at all. And then we can swap to our next colour. I'm going to go for a prize ribbon. And same again. So we're going to go and do the next set of lines. So we're going to blend what's left on our brush downwards so that the two colours mix together. And then upwards as well. Now, if you've got something like this here, but it goes a bit further. I'm just going to add a bit more ink and just make sure I get those very end dots. And again, blend out. The other thing to bear in mind when you're working with a stencil and inks is that the colour you think it is when you look through your stencil is actually a lot darker than reality. So it can get really quite misleading. You might think you haven't got any ink on there and then you lift up and you're like, oh yeah, I have. So especially when you want to be pale as pale can be. Next, let's go to a greeny colour. So I'm going to salvage patina. And the next line. Now, as we start to get up towards the lighter colours, if you are concerned about there being excess ink on your stencil, just grab a cloth and just give it a quick buff over the top, just so you're not contaminating your ink pad too much. So as we start to do that blending for these lighter colours, I'm just going to be a bit more mindful of that. Doing is just tapping my brush to pick up the ink. It's not even a case of swirling it that much. So when you swirl your, your brush, you're going to pick up an awful lot more ink. So if you want to go a bit darker, that's the way to go. But from something like this, where it's not too big, 
we can just tap. Okay. So, next I'm going to go to Scattered Straw. I'm going to get my little yellow one. And this is definitely going to be one where you are going to want to do a little bit of wipe. because we're going to a darker colour we don't have to worry quite as much about cleaning the top of our stencil at this point and I'm going to dry marigold which is kind of a pale orange compared to some of the other colours uh, I thought it looked good as a rainbow without going all the way to the darker reds You want your darkest colour to be right in this top line. Okay. So now when I peel that away, we've got the start of a rainbow effect. And good morning, Louise. make a good surface for um, what it holds watercolour paper in place instead of having to tape it. Magnetic board that is. Yes. Yep, you can definitely do that. Um, you could also use, if you have it, the foil quill mat as well because you have the magnetic strips in those. It's, they're not quite as strong as these. These are super strong magnets. So if you have like the Tim Holtz stamping platform, these are like way stronger than that, so you know how much that kind of snaps. So you also get a little magnetic wall, which is quite cool. With a center point, so that's that's quite handy when you're wanting to line something up. But what you will find is it loves to pick up your ink, so try not to get your ink on it if you can. So with that done. I'm thinking I'm going to grab some bigger blending brushes now. I'm going to pull some a few of these out just so I don't have to worry quite so much about cleaning the brushes. Okay. So you're probably thinking, well, you've already used a, a blending brush once, but why would you want something different? So these brushes here are going to give you quite um, an intense version of the colour when compared to these. So these are going to be much softer. So it's worth investing in a few. Um, you can get them from a few different places. And if you're interested, then you can always message me and I will send you in the right direction. So, I'm going to start the top again and work our way back down. So, back to our dry marigold and let's pick my ready kind of brush. So, with this one, you're just going to flick it along your ink pad as if you're painting the ink pad. In natural fact, you paint your brush. And you're going to have good coverage of ink on there. And we're going to start by Start off at the edge of your paper and we're just going to sweep it on and just rotate your brush. So a bit like if you've ever used a glass pen where you have to keep rotating your pen, you're going to do the same with your brush. Because obviously if you've loaded up all around your brush 
and you're only using it in one direction. You're wasting quite a bit of ink for starters. But it's a really soft effect, so you can probably only just about see it on this edge here. So this is one of those where definitely when you're stenciling with it, you're going to think, oh, there's nothing there. But when you lift up, you can see the difference. Okay. Next, let's go to Scattered Straw. And I'm going to pick a different brush for this. Just make sure you haven't got any um, loose bristles as well before we go to your ink pad, because you don't want those to be kind of left behind. Otherwise, when you come to stamping with them or picking up with a sponge, it can interfere a bit. Okay, so again, good coverage. And we're just going to flick and turn. Remember to go over the join between the two colours as well, once you've kind of got most of that ink out your brush, so that you get a nice blend. Now what I would recommend is you keep one of these brushes just for doing yellow. quite pale. I'm going to go to a lighter brush. So I think actually I could use that one. Hi Taz! Oh Louise don't tell me mum I shall be after it. That's on her birthday wish list isn't it mum? you've got most of that ink out your brush you can start overlapping those colours and don't also forget to blend out the bottom as well in the same way that we're doing with the stencil okay what's dinging it's dinging away it's not telling me what it's dinging at <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows I was going to go for this stencil. <laughs> I was busy making uh, samples yesterday and it's still got an outing. <laughs> How many different collections can it do? <laughs> So as we start to get to or the, the last couple of colours here, and these are going to be substantially darker than these up here. So you just want to be a bit more mindful about how much ink you're loading. So try not to overload your brush. And likewise, when you're flicking, make sure that when you flick, you, you keep that direction the same. Then we tend to go around like that because otherwise you can start to find you get little Swirls up here where it's kind of caught. Painting is very good for the soul though. <laughs> and we're nearly there. I'm going to use that same brush again for the villainous potion. So just a little bit. Because we've only got this bottom section to do, doesn't take very much. So I do my own bit first, then I cut. And you can start to see the really weird optical illusion that you have with your blending. Because you've got these dots, you think that you've done the same amount of blending as with a stencil. And it's all optical illusion. one. So 
so that's all using distress inks so any dye based ink is going to be good for doing that particular technique so let's just move that a bit closer hopefully i'm aiming it in the right place because i can't see my preview at the moment and i'm just going to give my stencil a quick clean so you can use a that baby wipe cloth I just use bamboo cloths so these can be washed and reused repeatedly <laughs> and they end up very pretty colours It's actually going to offset your center line a bit more, but that's okay. So, because where dots are, we can do our magnets a little closer, and it's just so much easier having those magnets there rather than using masking tape. Okay, I'm going to grab, let's grab a sponge. just so you can see the difference. Um, going to need blue. Um, let's go for that one. Okay. So, I'm going to go oxide this time, I think. And let's start off with my Villain's Potion in my oxide. So I tend to keep one end for inks and the other end for oxide so that they don't cross contaminate. And we can go straight on. So you can see straight away just how much colour you get through a sponge. But you can start to see that halo effect I was talking about. So as the ink starts to run out on your sponge that halo effect is going to become more pronounced. If you've got some little dots like this, you may find that you get better coverage by tapping rather than trying to swirl. Surprise ribbon. All the way down to the bottom edge right down here because we've used that to position our stencil so make sure that you get those two first points in even if it means you have to do a little bit of tapping and punching <laughs> getting that color through okay now because we're going to go to our lightest color just make sure that you give a stencil bit of a wipe so we get that excess off. Also by doing this you'll start to see your colours a bit truer as well. Okay. And 
one we're going to go to our salvage pattern. There we go. And let's get that colour on there. So this one is going to be a little bit more difficult to see when we're stenciling with it compared to the others. So definitely don't be afraid to go right in with this one because this is going to go right up to our edge. that same brushing technique just do keep separate brushes for your oxides but just to show you the difference that you get between the two if I put those side by side you can see that the edges in our ink are much sharper to what we get when we're using the sponge with the oxide so it's all down to that application tool choice that's okay Taylor Okay, so that's another one for later. Let's try something else. So again, gonna give my stencil and wipe down. So let's do something that isn't rainbow or ombre effect. And go full pelt. So I'm gonna get my card. I'm gonna go vertical the first one just because I've then I've got the length. I'm gonna pick the line that I want to have go down there. And again, I'm gonna apply our magnets. like so. So this is where we're going to actually start to play with our tools a bit. So I want it darker at the top and it's going to get lighter down towards the bottom and we're going to do that with just one ink pad. So the only difference that we're going to use is the tool. Now because I want this to be dark as dark can be, I'm going to start off with the oxide first and I'm going to get a blending brush so. we're going to always start at the top and work our way down because we want that gradient to get lighter towards the bottom so start off by putting a line of colour in across the top We start to move down. It's just going to use what's on top of that stencil just to fade that out. So far, so good, but I still want to go a bit darker still. So, and let's get my sponge. So now we can really go dark on this top edge and push that right through so we can go back to our blending brush and just use what's on top of the stencil just to blend in that top line Our paintbrush style ones and again we're going to start in the dark 
and flick it down. So even though the ink amount that we're going to transfer is significantly less, by starting in that dark section, we're not going to get any kind of tide marks. <laughs> you don't want to have like a, a line where it suddenly gets back dark again. And as we start to get right down to the dregs of what's in the brush, we're going to flick up. And that's just making sure that instead of having like a, a bit of a halo bit across the top, we're also going to catch that copper edge. But you want to be, make sure that you're right down to your dregs in your brush at that point. Okay. Now, if you want to add a little extra shadow with your inks, make sure you clean your stencil because you don't want to contaminate your distress inks with your oxides. So give it a very good scrub. my ink wrapping my oxide and we're going to start the top and work way down so your ink is quite a bit more um, punchy and it gets up these darker shades so we can get away with using the blending brush like this rather than the full on one So how many of you have the drawing templates? Because we can also use those with our stencils. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my stencil down in place. Don't worry too much about where you're positioning it in terms of the pattern. Just make sure it's sort of straight and level. Next, I'm going to decide which of my shapes I'm going to use. So let's go for this one. So I'm going to go there. So we've kind of got this kind of ombre effect going on to one side of our oval. Sure you avoid any other um, designs on your mat. Oh, I should have a bit of a random background. Not the end of the world if you do do it. Okay, now let's get my little blending tool. And now we can use what's left on the stencil and blend it up. Doing one line at a time. I 
and go right over your borders as well. down horizontally as in across your wider space. Okay. Now very carefully I'm going to move my magnet so I'm off of my little dash one here. Magnet temporarily down onto my card so I don't move that by accident. Let's do two, good measure. Okay, so I've got hold of my drawing template. I'm going to slide our dotty stencil out from underneath. Okay, now let's pop these back over on this side. And the theory being. should have everything still in the same place so we can just use what's left to actually go back over and shade our oval so that we can actually see that oval panel so I go around the border now this is where you want to go really careful because you've got two that are close together So I'm concentrating on this outer border first because that's where you're going to need the most ink to get through to pick up that detail and then we can start to blend that in round there By having one edge that's darker than the other, it's going to start to look a little bit 3D. So you can play with that effect for frames and things like that. I do apologise if I'm not seeing your comment because it's tinging well, but I can't see what anybody's saying. It's useful. And there we go. So we have a lovely shape ring. So we can cut that out and apply that onto another surface if we want to, or we can actually work directly onto that with our stamps. Okay, and again, let's give that a clean because that is no well and truly mucky. <laughs> Is really mucky like that and you don't want to waste it because obviously it's still ink. What I can do is I'm gonna get a bit bored. And I'm just gonna give it a good scrub. Now this isn't going to give you a really dark impression, but you can use it as a basis for another panel. And there we go. So we've still got our dots on there. So then when we work over the top of our other stencils, we've still got some background interest what might give you an idea as to where you're going to put your focal point for your layout. Another thing. If you've done a load of stenciling and you've got a really, really inky stencil that's going all the way across, if you've got a water mister bottle, hold it at a distance, give it a little squirt, and then you can put that down into your journal, for instance. Literally, inky side down, close the book, press it as if you're using a stamp platform and you'll get a transfer which will give you a totally different look again so instead of having coloured dots you're going to have like white dots and coloured outside 
Or if you're working in a black journal, if you're using the oxides, you can play with that too. And just sprinkle some water after to get those colours to pop. So I hope that's given you a few ideas of ways it can work with stencils. You can also doodle through them. So if you're used to using your drawing templates and you want some more things to actually play with, then don't rule out using your stencils. And I'll quite happily take a pen too. Any questions before I go? And I will wait a little bit because there's about a 30 second delay between me saying something and you hearing it. Um, just the wonders of the internet. <laughs> So when we did the one with the frame, I could easily have changed colour at that point just to make sure you clean your stencil first. So before you do any movement, just clean your stencil. And you're welcome Linda. Okay, well thank you for joining me. Do keep an eye on both um, the Pretty Gets Pretty page and on the Planicraft page for the next prompt. But let's see your favourite things. So your challenge is to show us what is your favourite craft tool, supply or um, range even. And let's see what you make with it. And good morning Joe. you nearly missed me. <laughs> Yeah, it is a great crafty day when it's wet and miserable. <laughs> so, it was a little bit brighter first thing, but uh, hopefully up in the sun will come out where you are soon. So take care for now. Thank you for joining me. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you on Friday with something a little bit different. Yeah, you nearly missed me. So just quickly to go over what we've done. Um, we did. Let's try and do these in order, shall we? So we did our rainbow version. Our application with the sponge. Our single ink pad ombre. And then using it with the drawing templates and funny giving it a clean and using that as a start from the next background. So, take care for now. I will see you Friday on Planner Craft um, and probably see you next week on Pretty Gets Gritty. So, take care and bye!